what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Ben and today we're going to be testing out the Braun from Haybike. Whoops! Assembly looks like it should be pretty straightforward. We've got Nobby Chow Ying 26 by 4 inch tires, 48 tooth front sprocket with aluminum guard, the fairly common 7 speed Shimano shifter, and that controls our Shimano tourney derailleur on the back here. There's our 7 gears with the rather tall first. This bike does come with a guard for the derailleur, along with a pre-mounted water bottle holder. Brakes are hydraulic, made by RSX. And if you find that the levers get a little bit too close to the bars for your liking, they can be pretty easily adjusted by spinning these little Allen keys inside of them. That's a little better. And down at the other end of the system here, we've got drilled rotors with RSX calipers. Hay bike branded motor on the back. Up front, we do get some suspension on the dual crown forks. And these are adjustable. We've got preload on the left and compression on the right. And if you guys are unfamiliar, the preload is essentially used to adjust how much pressure is put on the spring without you on the bike. And that basically sets the ride height and can sort of be adjusted for your riding style. Whereas the compression over here is adjusting how fast or how slow the shocks can be compressed when you go over a bump. So the more you turn it up, the slower they're gonna compress. And if you want it to be a little bit of a softer ride, then you can turn it back down. And really the goal behind both of those adjustments is to make the bike as comfortable as possible and to absorb as much of the impact as the bike can possibly handle without transferring any of that energy into the frame, other components, and you. And attached to those forks, we've got an awesome headlight. I've seen this on other e-bikes and it works great. We've got some rubbery ergonomic grips that do clamp right onto the bar so we won't have to worry about these moving around on us. Thumb throttle is on the right with a button underneath that says auto. Fairly large hay bike display. Two control pads on the left here, one for the display and one for horn and headlight. And this lever right here is not another throttle. It's probably the coolest part about this bike. If I go ahead and give that lever a push, the seat pops up for a little bit more comfortable pedaling. And if you need to get down to the ground or run through a technical section, you just put your weight back on the seat, push that lever in, and the seat drops right back down. Really pretty cool. Now, the first thing I noticed when I sat on this bike was how skinny these handlebars are compared to everything else that I've ridden. I'm not sure how I'll like it. I guess we'll just see on the test ride. Charge port is gonna be on the right side of the bike. It also has a USB adapter in it to charge your phone or other accessories. And then we do actually have an on off switch that has to be in the on position before the bike will turn on. Hold the power button down here. If we get that again, this is going to cycle through distance, odometer, motor, wattage. And that's definitely a nice thing to be able to see. We'll be able to tell how much power the controller is sending to the motor. We've got battery bars up top along with a voltage readout. We've got a Bluetooth symbol flashing because you can actually download an app and connect your phone to this. We've got our speed in miles per hour and a pedal assist level of zero. So if I go up, we can go up to the factory five setting that it comes with. I've been messing with the controls a bit so we can go all the way up to nine. If we press and hold the headlight button, then the display lights up. The other light button here is gonna be for the headlight and I suppose we might as well give the horn a toot. Let's see how that headlight works. Yeah, not bad at all. Pretty darn good for a bicycle. Now on the other bike that I've got this headlight on, when you turn the headlight itself off, the ring on here or the halo still glows and it doesn't seem like there's a way to turn that on. Oh, what the heck, now the light turned on. I don't know what I did, but man, that looks cool. Now, as I mentioned before, I did modify a few things in here already. If you guys wanna do that, basically just hold down the bottom and the top button there and it'll bring you into this menu. We can kind of toggle through a few things. A lot of this stuff I'm on honestly not too sure what it is supposed to mean. Uh, some of it's pretty clear cut and easy to understand, but other parts of it, your guess is as good as mine. There's our pedal assist. We've got our speed limit here. That tops out at 63 miles an hour. Then we've got current limit, which I've got maxed out at 
31. So get out of there, I'll just hold those down again, and then we're ready to go. And one kind of cool feature about this bike is if you hold down the minus button, it will actually put it in sort of a walk mode. So the back tire is slowly spinning back there. Is that it, can we ride it now? No, the battery, we gotta take a look at the battery. So to get that out, we've just gotta turn our key here and then flip the locking mechanism. We do need to get the tire out of the way. Definitely a pretty hefty battery. There's the number on the bottom if you're interested. 18 amp hours, 48 volts, discharge current 25 amp max, and charge current a 5 amp max. The charger is branded Haybike, and that gives us a maximum output of 4 amps. Tools and the owner's manual. They also sent me two of these stickers, which I would assume are probably going to start coming on the bike. I don't know exactly why they didn't make it onto mine, but... A lot of good information there if you're interested. We've also got a charge cable here for the tail light. So I will throw a leg over this to kind of give you guys an idea of what I look like on the bike. I am 5'10 with a 31 inch inseam and I weigh about 160 pounds. So to pedal this when the seat is dropped all the way, I think I could definitely do it, but having that seat a bit higher up is definitely going to extend my legs a bit and is definitely gonna be more comfortable. And of course, if we need to go back down, all we gotta do is push that lever and it drops us. As far as the seat goes, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it feels on the ride. So on pedal assist zero, we get nothing from the throttle at all. If I bump that up and crank this, we slowly ramp up to three miles an hour. Maybe nine pedal assist levels is a little bit too much, but I guess we'll see. Bump that all the way up to nine. Let's see what this thing will give us. 28 and a half. Woo, the brake's got some power. I thought maybe this auto button would be like a cruise control, but it doesn't really seem like it. The tire definitely stays spinning for a long time, but it doesn't seem like it's actually keeping the motor going, so. I'm not sure what that's about. Whoa! That definitely has some power. Whoa! Well, it definitely feels like it's got some weight to it, but let's see what the scales say. 35.3 up front, 23.2 in the rear, and 14.1 on the kickstand. So that's 72.6 pounds according to my cheapo Amazon scales. I'm gonna get this thing turned off before I charge it, which is what you always wanna do with any e-bike battery that has a switch like this on it. We'll get this thing charged up to 100%, and then we'll take the hay bike run out on the road and some gnarly trails and see how it does. So we're starting off with a full battery and 54.3 volts and we've got a distance of zero miles on the trip meter here so we'll see what we get out of this thing and right now i'm cruising along actually quite comfortably on pedal assist zero so like might as well be off and i'm in that fir very first tall gear and man i've got to say this is this is not all that dissimilar from pedaling my just regular old acoustic mountain bike uh the, the diamondback that i've got and i mean it seems like every other bike that i've got that's an e-bike really does not feel that way and I, I think it really is just because of that extra tall first that's nice and obviously off-road it'll be a little bit different but anyways we will put some power to that 750 watt motor back there pedal assist one almost nothing like we showed in the garage that's like a four or five mile an hour cruising speed bump it up to two here can't really tell there we go let's see if we can do a lag test here and i won't say anything i think you guys can probably actually just pick it up when the motor kicks on let's see so hopefully you heard that slow ramp up i'll let off yeah kind of hard to tell when it kicks off let's go up a little higher pedal assist four whoa we're taking off time to shift some gears not doing too much work but i definitely could if i wanted to Five. Oh yeah it seems like this is the type of bike that gives you all the power right away or at least close to it we're at 53.2 volts now pedal assist level nine we'll start out on gear number one and i will use the throttle here to help me out we'll see how fast we can get this thing to go and how long it takes us to get there ready go oh let off just a little bit when i let off the throttle 
25 and it limited us there whoa <laughs> what Woo boy. well that pedaling warmed me up a little bit but i think i need to get off road to warm myself up a little more it definitely turned cold here in wisconsin i think it was 49 or 50 degrees Woo. and before we have an accident like we did last time let's be smart with our camera well, it doesn't end up on the side of the trail that is the insta 360 if you guys are interested i'll have links for that as well as all my other gear down in the description those are all affiliate links so it doesn't cost anything i guys anything extra but it does make a huge impact on uh, my simply the ability for me to actually make videos like this for you guys so i definitely appreciate it when you guys use those there will also be a link for this bike down there and i'll have information on whether that's an affiliate code or not and if there's any sort of discount code that i can offer you that will be down there as well so well be sure and check that out before you make a purchase I'm bumping along here i've got to say i don't think i'm going to be sitting on this seat much off road i think if it was maybe a little bit more plush a little wider and a little less weird shape than i guess maybe some of you guys like this type of seat it's not really my thing it doesn't quite seem to fit me very well so i'll probably be dropping the seat after a bit here without any tools just the the flick of a lever why not why not do it right now here let's go all the way down i can stand up and i can still get low oh i missed my first jump oh this is going awfully <laughs> my fault of course not the bikes standing up definitely get some rattling from the back however Woo. Uh, the bike honestly feels pretty darn good i'll try to pedal i always end up just doing the throttle should find a sweet spot in the speed settings pedal assist settings sort of like a speed setting all right maybe we'll try to actually get some exercise here otherwise half the time i just put whoa good thing those brakes work good with one finger those are nice i like those Definitely can feel the back losing traction though, that's for sure. Uh, but what I was saying is that when I, when I do these videos, I try to stand up the whole time and my left leg is always in a really weird position being stuck kind of towards the back just to keep both feet kind of high up in the air. And <laughs> I think I can feel them still sore from last time. Oh, yeah, definitely feel myself losing traction there pretty quick. So this thing might be okay for lighter off-road riding but uh, on bumpy stuff like this you're definitely gonna have to find a way to sort of compensate for that bounce to keep traction otherwise that can be pretty dangerous you can actually get bucked right off of the pedals and again that's as always <laughs> this is not necessarily what this bike is intended to do but i figured this is about a as good of a torture test as you could do with this bike while only owning it for whew, a couple days so hopefully this brings out any issues for you guys if there is anything specific woo, that you would like to see when i do these videos because i do plan on doing a lot more of them definitely let me know there i felt like the front almost washed Ooh, does feel good to jump that's for sure Boy, I sure didn't think I would be sweating out here. <laughs> but I do have my my sponsor, uh, MSR. We've got their base layer on underneath this. So, ooh, along with their knee pads, which hopefully I won't use or need to use, need to have. Oh, I like having that seat drop down low. That is nice. Ooh. get over that front tire a little bit more Woo! i'm just kind of holding on a little bit farther out on these bars which i assume is probably what they intend you to do now just because they are so skinny and on that note honestly i mean i think it's kind of nice to have them sucked in like this I'm so used to bikes that don't have them pulled in that far but i sure don't mind it now that i'm out here man Woo! kind of almost feels like it makes more sense somebody else is out here 
disturbing the leaves. Ugh. I always forget to look how pretty it is out here, but man, this is a an awesome trail. If you guys are anywhere near the the Wausau area, this is just a couple minutes east of there. And boy, is it worth the trip. So yeah, I gotta say, definitely could be a little bit lighter, or be a little lighter, getting ahead of myself. Definitely could be a little bit squishier on the back end. I guess maybe I should even let some air out of the tires. But this thing honestly rocks through here pretty darn good. I think I'm, maybe I'm just getting better at bicycling again finally, but I think I'm definitely doing better on this than I was on the Yodo e-bike, which is a great bike and is a lot of fun. But this thing, even though it has a, a smaller motor, it definitely seems like it gives you power immediately, which is nice. And because it doesn't have that rear suspension, I think just overall is maybe a little bit slimmer design in general. This thing definitely feels a little bit more like it's made to do what I'm doing with it. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, this is not going to be your hyper magical e-bike for doing insane downhill mountain biking or anything like that. I mean, this is still a, a budget e-bike, but man, I say every time I go out, I think I say the bike that I'm on is my favorite. You guys probably think, whoa, I'm just trying to sell you stuff. But no, I mean, this thing, this thing feels light. It feels good. It's nice to have that front suspension to kind of take the, the fatigue off of your, your upper body. Woo. Honestly, it, it really works pretty darn well out here. Again, I'm getting shook up a bit, so that fatigue load is gonna obviously tax me a bit, and the ride will be shortened. The last time I took a, a bike out here with no suspension, I definitely felt it the next day, and even just later on in the ride on the way back, I realized as much fun as I was having, as hard as I was pushing that bike, because it felt so good to be so connected to the trail like this one does, uh, I realized that you still just really burn yourself out quick even if you can make it do exactly what you want that constant jarring is is taxing so i think we probably hit that one enough i'll stop talking about it i do have to say i am pleasantly surprised compared to my expectations it's the 360 still going she moved a bit uh i gotta get a drink i didn't actually think i would need this out here today uh, and i know this is kind of turning into a big infomercial but I promise you this is just because I love this so much because I think anybody that goes out and does stuff like this or skiing or snowboarding or really anything, uh, I think you'd really benefit from one of these hydration packs. I love having it. Uh, it's nice to give you the water bottle holder on here, but just having it on your back and having two liters of it is so nice. I hardly go anywhere without this thing anymore. I really, really like that these these levers can be basically activated and with full stopping power just with one finger. That is is so nice. And the adjustability of them, I mean, they're not even bedded in. And man, they, they work, I would have to say, better than most, most of the brakes that I've tried. They do seem to be relying heavily on the front. I think that's just because the throttle's on the left. So it actually would be kind of nice if maybe the, or the throttle's on the right. It'd be nice if the throttle was on the left. How do I always screw this up? I always end up going the wrong way. I think I'm just going to turn this into my normal route then we can do that big hill climb anyway uh, actually, I actually didn't think I was even gonna be able to get out today because I woo, had everything ready to to load up in the car and uh, walked outside and it was raining but apparently we just had a little sprinkle and now it's a beautiful fall day if these hand grips aren't terrible and I mean I, I beat myself up just about every day of my life, either working on something or riding something. Did have a rather strenuous camping trip not too long ago, which was more of an endurance test if you guys missed it on the little TW200. Oh, Ooh, that brings the front end up easy. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at here is that my hands are a bit sore. I don't know if that's actually the grips on here. I really kind of like them. They're definitely nice and nice and grippy. I like them much better than the full leather grips, especially for doing stuff like this. And it kind of seems like maybe this bike is really geared more towards this type of riding, if not this exact type of riding. And I'm not sure, you know, 
what they what they build into these bikes as far as a uh, prevention from the the battery and components getting destroyed after repeated bouncing around like I've been doing here today. Everything that I've ridden so far has held held up. I don't know, you know, long term obviously how things are going to handle repetitive riding like this. But I do have to say this bike does feel a lot more at home here than I guess I thought it would. And that's because of a couple things. A lot of the stuff I guess I've already mentioned, but I mean, it's partially just the throttle. I mean, the, the overall ergonomics and the feel of the bike, how easy it is to kind of lean it around. And I suppose that's just the fact that this has four 26 by four inch tires where the last bike like this I tried had 26 by 4.8. So almost a five inch wide tire. And that obviously adds some mass rolling mass and definitely makes it a little bit more cumbersome to to handle in the woods but this thing really feels nimble out here i wonder if they're going to do a version of this with some suspension on the rear i think that would be that would be really really nice for out here not that this is bad this is still quite enjoyable i'm definitely glad that the rain didn't keep me inside today i feel like i needed this i always need this i always need to get out and ride something and it sure is cool that i'm back on on bikes I actually got started off turning wrenches on bikes with my grandpa and he kind of taught me taught me not everything i know but got a really good foundation started and taught me how to not how to do everything but how to figure whoa figure stuff out wow i like this bike <laughs> it just feels like it's easy to get in the air and i think maybe some of that honestly is just the fact that it doesn't have suspension because on a bicycle when you kind of bunny hop it i suppose would be the correct term it kind of takes a bit of force to jam the bike down and sus whoa, compress the rear suspension so without that I guess maybe that makes it a lot easier to pop up I suppose it does that sure feels good I think this might be my new favorite bike until they come out with one with a spring on the back I really do not like that I'm <laughs> relying on that front all the time though that back I'd almost like to switch those of course that would be super confusing but i think it definitely would be nice to be able to get a finger on there there's just too much going on on that right side maybe i could pedal the bike <laughs> i just kind of don't like that for this stuff the the throttle is much more understandable i guess and much more intuitive i suppose would be a good word for it and it definitely isn't giving me a ridiculous amount of power i guess i'm only oh no it is giving me a ridiculous amount of power isn't it yeah 1200 watts right away which i really like all right so Let's get this thing, pedal assist nine, and we'll do this ridiculous hill with a little bit of a rollout. Try to give it just a little bit of power with my feet. Yeah, it's having a rough time. Definitely got to stand up and help it, but that is that is a ridiculously steep hill. We got equipment up there now. I don't know what they're doing. This would be halfway through the ride, 51.7 volts. What do we put on here for miles? 5.7. Six total on the bike. All right, let's head back and see what we get out of this thing for range. I do have to say it is a little bit of a letdown to have the throttle work completely off of the pedal assist setting meaning that if you want all the power and all the top speed I guess really just all the top speed because I think it kind of gives you all the power regardless but only up until the top speed which is good if you want that for cruise control and initially I, I kind of really liked that and thought it was cool but the more that I ride these the more I realize if you're going to ride them off road you don't you don't want that pedal assist nine setting on these trails but you do want to be able to hit the throttle and have it give you everything that it can offer oh now maybe that's kind of rider preference but that's definitely my preference so how many of you guys ride trails like this or plan to ride trails like this on a bike most of my regular viewers are uh motorcycle whoa off-road motorcycle nuts like i am so they I'm sure would always prefer to see an off-road video, but I don't know, maybe maybe if you're just 
here to see what this bike can do. I guess maybe you're wishing that uh, I would have spent more time on the pavement. Let me know down in the comments. Woo! Can't make any, whoa, promises. Wow, yes, I'm glad I was covering the back for that. Wait a minute. How did I get over here? Ooh. Yeah, I certainly didn't miss that derailleur bouncing around back there when I tested the bike with no suspension, but it is definitely nice to have the gears on here, especially when you're doing steep hill climbs. I really like that tall first. All right, now that I'm good and wore out, we'll hit my favorite jump. Whoa, yeah, that is definitely the best air I've gotten on one of these. Boy, that's nice. All right, I'm gonna test this thing out with zero assist at all and see what I can see what I can do here hmm yeah this is substantially less enjoyable <laughs> there's a little downhill that's not so bad I'm actually gonna have to use the Shimano shifter here hey you know what you could definitely do this if you were in better shape whoa or in my case if i got in better shape i think i could definitely i could definitely come out here and do this but of course i think i'd really only want to on the way back i can definitely feel my legs that i suppose were already burning burning even more <laughs> but the low gear definitely helps boy would i love to give that a shot but i don't think that's going to happen <laughs> that's over my skill level for now that is i might have to might have to get out here some more and get a little better so we can do some of these. Those look like fun. Oh, not when you case them though. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. <laughs> and hear and feel it too, right? What if I just need to stop and turn this thing around? How hard is that? Eh, not bad. Woo. All right, back at the old abandoned airstrip here, which is not an abandoned airstrip, it's just a road. We are at, what, 49.4 volts. And I did see a little bit of voltage say going on there at some point, 49.5. We are gonna get this thing up to whatever top speed is now with the charge that we've got, and then hammer on the brakes and see what they'll do. Ready, go. There's the voltage sag, 46. All right, almost 25. Oh yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> a little nervous to throw myself over the bars. Let's try that again. Whoa, yeah, okay. So I think maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm saving myself and I don't really know it. So final thoughts on the Haybike Brawn. I've got to say, I am extremely impressed and surprised with this bike. It did absolutely everything that I asked it to do, and it did uh, really a much better job than I thought it would. Like I mentioned, the seat isn't great. Yes, it could be a thousand watt motor, but honestly, uh, like we saw on the display, I mean, it, it definitely gives you more than enough power, uh, well over a thousand watts, and it didn't seem to have any problems when I was doing that. Definitely could turn the bars a little bit further, but I didn't run into issues with that, so I guess, uh, I don't know, maybe you would at some point, but I think having the extra stability and strength with the dual crown fork is definitely worth it. The suspension works great up front, like I said, could have a little bit of squish in the back, but when you get a sort of budget suspension, you are going to kind of sacrifice some ride quality in some senses. It's going to make it more comfortable, but it's definitely not going to be made for super aggressive off-road riding it's basically just there to kind of help cushion the blow so in some conditions and for some riders it, honestly i think a hardtail is going to be your best bet but of course that's up to you so if you guys are looking for an off-road monster with the absolute best top line components this is probably not the bike for you but this thing is definitely impressive if you're looking for a bike with these specs i think you'll have a blast on this i sure did i mean just swap that seat out and i think this thing would be just about perfect for, for for the price i really like it so if you guys want to pick one of these up take a look down in the description 
I'll have a link to the bike as well as any discount that I can offer you. And again, if you guys want to pick up any of the other stuff that I've used in the video today, take a look down in the description. I'll have it all listed out there. And if you make a purchase from there, it'll help me to continue making videos like this for you guys, which I definitely appreciate. I love getting out here and doing this for you guys. So take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get. And hey, if you can't do it right now, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime.